online advertising, tracking, and optimization are very reliant on making sure that we have conversion and retargeting pixels on our website. So we can know what actions people are taking on our pages, on our sites, are they converting or not converting? How can we create audiences? And then we use that information in the ad platform to optimize performance. If we don't have those pixels on our site, we're basically flying blind. So one of the things that I wanna talk about today is how we can get pixels on our website a lot easier. And the tool that we're gonna use for that is Google Tag Manager. It's free, it's easy to use, and it takes all of the intimidation factor out of having to go in and manually install codes on your website and being worried that you're gonna break it. So today I wanna to talk about how to install the Google Tag Manager pixel on your own website, and then how we can start to add the tags and triggers in the account so we can start optimizing for our PPC performance. Let's hop in. In the Google Tag Manager interface, the first thing you wanna do after you have your account set up is to get your Google Tag Manager tag on your website. So the easiest way to do that is to come up here, you'll have a Google Tag Manager account ID. It'll start with GTM dash and then numbers and letters. I'm sorry we've blurted out, but you don't need to see what that is. So you just click on this and it'll open up a pop-up box that actually shows you the codes that you need and it tells you where to put it. This first portion, you need to paste the code as high in the head of your page as possible. And then also paste this secondary code immediately after the opening body tag of your website. So all you have to do is copy these, paste them into your website where they tell you to put it and you're all set. The way that Google Tag Manager operates is it's effectively a container to hold all of your tags and the event triggers that you want for your website. So when you have ads set up in Google Ads, Microsoft Ads, Facebook, LinkedIn, Quora, Reddit, all down the line, and any other pixels you need for anything outside of PPC, you can manage all those scripts directly in the interface. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a very high level look at how Google Tag Manager works. And I'll apologize ahead of time for the graphics. I'm not a designer, I'm a PPC pro, but hopefully this will give you a crash course on exactly how it's gonna work. Google Tag Manager has two key components, the tag, and the trigger. The tag itself is going to be the script that you get within your ad channels. This could be your conversion code, remarketing code, base pixel, whatever the channel calls it, that's called a tag. A trigger is the action somebody takes on your website that you wanna track. It could be a purchase, lead, content download, phone call. We'll get into some of the triggers here in a minute, but anything that you wanna track on your website, that is called a trigger. The way Google Tag Manager works is you have to associate the tag with the trigger so that when somebody comes to your website and takes that action, Google Tag Manager will fire the tag that you linked to it. So now hopping into the Google Tag Manager interface once more, we'll need to add tags and triggers separately. Over here on the left, you can click tags. You'll then see the list of tags that are already available on this website. You can then see the triggers that they're associated with. So creating a new one, you just click the new button. This builder will come out on the right. You can then name your tag by coming up here. Click on tag configuration and you'll see there are a number of automated tag types you can choose from. There are some that are featured because they're usually the Google tools. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see that there are custom HTML, custom image tags, if you wanna use those. And then there's also a list of all sorts of other tags that are on here that directly integrate without you needing to do any sort of custom HTML. There's an ad roll tag, crazy egg, all sorts of things. So I would encourage you to scroll through here and see if the platform you're using has a custom integration set up already. Um, if it doesn't, all you need to do is click the custom HTML button and then paste your code right in here, however it needs to be. Once you've got your custom HTML code in place, you can set up a trigger right here within this interface if you want to. So it'll open up the triggers that you already have associated here. You can click that and say you want it to fire on all pages and then click save and it'll save your custom HTML tag that we set up and associate the trigger with all pages. But let's jump in and see how we can create a trigger from scratch. Again, over here on the left, just below tags is the trigger tab. You can see that we already have a trigger set up here that does not list the all pages option because that is the default option that it gives every single account. You don't need to create an all pages trigger. Everything aside from all pages, this is what we'll need to set up. So currently we already have a scroll depth piece set up, but let's create a new one and see what all is available. 
click trigger configuration. And then similar to the way that it showed a number of different tags, it'll open up this option on the right and show you all of the trigger types it has available. Page view is gonna be one of the most common. This is the equivalent to your URL rules that you have within the platforms of if somebody hits a page that contains thank you or contains download or whatever it want it to be. This is effectively where you would set those up. So you can click that. You'll see that it can set up a trigger as firing on all page views or some page views. And then here's where you would start to customize the trigger based on whether it had a certain URL path in it. So this is what you would use for like a thank you page. It would look something like this, right? Pretty basic. This is how you would set up the equivalent to that sort of thing in Google Tag Manager. But let's look at some of the other trigger configurations that we have available as well. We can start to get a lot more customized with how people engage with our website, whether they clicked on certain elements or links on the page, whether they could see certain elements or not, how far did they scroll on the page? Did they watch a YouTube video clip on our website and how much of it did they watch? Or how long were they on the page? Or if there's even a custom event, you can even create custom events based on how people are engaging with your website. You can then hop back into the tags tab Click on the tag you wanna set up a new trigger for. You can then come down here and you'll see triggering. We already have it on all pages. You can then click this little pencil, click the plus, and you can add a new trigger that you want to associate with this pixel. And then they'll all show up here. And now you've got both of them firing on that same page. So you click save. And you'll now see that this pixel is actually firing on all pages and scroll depth. This combination does not make sense, but I just wanted you to see what it would look like if you had multiple triggers firing for the same tag in your Google Tag Manager account. And it's that simple. All you need to do is set up the tags you want from your ad channels. Think about the triggers, whether it's a basic URL page load type of rule, or if it's something more sophisticated like time on site or video engagement, any of those other custom triggers you set up on the account, then you just need to link the two and start seeing the metrics show up in your ad account. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 